Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. John Schmelk with you. Today's guest, former NFL general manager, now ESPN insider, Mike Tannenbaum. Mike, good to see you, man. Great to be with you, John. And of course, you can find the Giants Huddle Podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms and the Giants mobile app. And it's brought to you by AWS, proud partner of the New York football Giants. All right, Mike, let's let's get into it here. Give me your 20,000-foot overview of this draft class in general before we start knocking into some of the details. Yeah, look, I think the storyline is... Tons of pass rushers, not enough quarterbacks. And um, when you think of even guys like the Jermaine Johnsons of the world, who I thought had a really good week in Mobile. Unblockable d- yeah, down there. Yeah, and really, like, ironically, we're at the Giants here, but there were some, like, Carl Banks in his game, because I thought he set the edge better than I expected. Yeah, I agree. So um, I think he's going to be a really good NFL player. And then you get into the Ojabos of the world, and then obviously Hutchinson, Thibodeau. Um, I think it's a really good group. You know, even the interior pass rushers like Devontae Wyatt, um, you know, Trayvon Walker, there's, you know, some mixed feelings on him around the league, but I think it's a really deep group at, at the pass rush position. Let me ask you about Trayvon Walker, actually, because I think he's interesting. You know, I watch his, his Georgia tape, and they, I know he's a defensive end, but they almost use him like an interior guy, right? He's not lined up outside the tackle a whole lot, and you don't really see him use that speed and bend you want out of an edge guy. So how do you think he fits in the NFL, how do you think teams view him? So why you mentioned that, I compare him to Ty Warren because I thought he was like a little bit thicker. I didn't see like the twitchy edge guy. Now I agree. That's what's the hard part though about this process because if he lost 15 pounds, it's hard to say that maybe he couldn't become more of like the traditional you know defensive end lining out, out, outside of the tackle. Um, yeah, he was thought, playing at 255 and 270s, very different. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought they reduced him a lot to three technique, like you said, and he's an effective pass rusher, good use of hands. Um, but you better have a clear vision of what was he, he going to play at? What's the scheme fit? Is he interior pass rusher? Is he outside? Um, there will be a lot of discussions about him. Do you agree that this is kind of a draft where a lot of these boards are going to look very different because there just aren't that many true blue chippers at yeah. the top? And one team could have a guy at 7, another could have that guy at 22, one team could have a guy at 20, another one has him in the middle of the second round. Is that kind of what this draft is going to be just based on the talent class? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think if you could trade back and get a little volume in that area, that, that would be well worth doing. Do you think trade backs are going to be available? Because obviously you need to find the team that wants to move up. Yeah, maybe for a handful of players, you know, maybe a Kyle Hamilton, so, someone that's like a rare player possibly. But uh, I, I think more teams would want to move back than move up. What are you hearing about Kayvon Thibodeau? You know, you talked to teams five, six months ago. People think he would have been the first overall pick. Now, everybody I've talked to this week says, oh, you know, we worried about, you know, not necessarily his coachability, but consistent effort. You know, just what are you hearing about him and why maybe he, the perception is that he's sliding down boards a yeah, little bit. Yeah, because when you compare that to a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, where it's, you know, so much the other way a thousand percent every play all yeah, the time yeah i think Thibodeau unfairly gets you know dinged a little bit i think when it's all said that he'll be a really good player his length is hard to find mm-hmm. he's a nfl like unlike what we just talked about with walker he is a prototypical guy who i like i really like his length so if he's in the right system with the right coach i think he's somebody that will be if he falls a little bit somebody will be really happy could you think he could be in the mix for the Giants at 5-7 and seven based on their scheme with McMartindale? Could he be a fit there? Oh, no question about it. And they need pass rushers. Like, we've talked about that for years now. Like, yeah. the Giants just need more pressure players than the front seven. All right, let's talk about the offensive line at the top of this class. We just saw uh, Evan Neal at the podium this morning. I've never seen a guy carry 340 pounds as seamlessly as that guy. He looks like an NBA power forward, for goodness sakes, at 340. It's crazy. You know, uh, Iki Ikwanyu talks like... You know, he got accepted to Harvard and Yale. He's just a really smart guy, monster. What do you think of the top of this offensive line class? And if those top two guys are gone, how big of a drop-off is it for you to that next group if the Giants have to go there at 5-7? and seven? I don't think so. Like, Cross from Mississippi State, he's a really good player as well. Um, there, there is good depth at, at the tackle position. Um, Neil, to me, is, like, fascinating because of his size. Like I say, you know, he's a guy that, you know, he's probably not as big as Makai Becton, but he probably moves a little bit better. I was a big Andrew Thomas guy came out because I thought Andrew Thomas reminded me a little bit of the Berkershaw Ferguson. and um, But I think if they could add, if the Giants could add another tackle, you know, Solder, obviously, I can't imagine he'll be there. No, he's not going to be back. Yeah, no. yeah. So, to me, like, if they could add, like, again, maybe they get cross if they move back a little bit because I, I think – well, I like those other two guys a little bit more. I think Cross comes in and is a really effective player. 
as a general manager, when you look at a guy like Cross, right, he really broke out this past year. That was his best year. Mm-hmm. And he plays in a very unique college system. Yep. Never in a three-point stance, doesn't yep. have to run block. But to your point, his pass protection is probably the best pass protecting tackle in the draft, probably better than maybe even Nail and Aquani, right? So how do you view that through that lens and how he's going to translate? Because I was I had Daniel Jeremiah here yesterday, and he's like, you know, I might be a little biased because Andre Dillard was the same type of guy, and then he didn't really work out. So, how do you view a guy like Cross coming from a system like yeah, that? Yeah, no, that's a good point by DJ because of the Mike Leach impact. Because, of the, but I would say this: two thirds of your your game is passing anyway. And I think Cross has the athleticism where he can learn the other part of it. Um, but if you come out of this with a good pass protector, and he's bookend with Andrew Thomas, I think you're going to be pretty pleased with the result. Are you good with Cross at, at right tackle? Do you even consider that? A thing anymore it you used know. to be much more of a thing that you know the athletic left tackle the power right tackle i think that's a little antiquated now because, i agree with you you know especially like with coach dayball now like he's gonna get the ball the quarterback's hands it's gonna be behind the line of scrimmage like you know can he get out and block like cross can get out and block on the perimeter outside the numbers like there's a lot of parts of his game i like for a general manager when you're doing these interviews you know it's easy to figure out what a guy can do now, right? All right, I know this guy can execute this, he'll come in, he'll do this. How do you try to figure out where guys can improve and what guys are going to improve, right? Who's going to realize their potential? Because that's really the trick in this whole process, right? And it's a a very tough thing to do. John, I'm just like so impressed by the amount of fans you have here that they're just applauding on every word you have. I appreciate, by the way, for the folks, people were bench pressing about 40 yards from us, so that, that's what that is. I appreciate it, though. Oh, I thought they were here cheering for you. Uh, they should be. <laughs> yeah. the, the questions are phenomenal, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just kidding. yeah. <laughs> um, what was the question? I don't even No, I'm sorry. Um, how do you figure out what guys yeah. are able to meet their potential and actually improve when they get into your program? It's all about the intangibles. It's all about do they love football? What are they going to do in the off season? Are they going to be working on the weight room and getting stronger? All those things are really important. How do you figure that out, though? Like, how do you figure out which guys have those intangibles? Who you are in life is how you treat people that can't help you. The waiter, the waitress, the bus driver, the strength coach, the equipment person. You want great guys that care deeply about football, care deeply about their teammates. Interesting. And that kind of goes into the whole culture thing, too, right? Yeah, and I think sometimes that's a cliche, a little bit overused. I agree. Yeah. But what I would say is, if you're the first one in, the last to leave, you're going to be coachable, you're going to get better. Interesting. So now if you're Joe Shane, right, you're just stepping into this building, you hire a first-time head coach. What are you trying to do in this first draft to figure things out? And even maybe before we even get to the draft, how are you now handling leading up to free agency? You have to get under the cap, your team coming off a bad year, you're over the cap anyway, not the situation you want to be in. So how do you try to manage your cap situation, freeing up enough money to A, be cap compliant, two, try to give yourself some ability to mold this team in the way you want to in free agency, right? But not jettison good players that can help you win games. Yeah, so. It's ironic. My first draft with the Jets, we had two ones. We took two offensive linemen, DeBrickshaw, Ferguson, Nick Mangold. Yeah, good picks, by the way. Yeah, yeah, foundational players for a long time. And I think that's where the Giants are, you know, starting over new GM, Coach Dayball, head coach. Like, you want to get foundational players. They, they don't have to – ideally, they're A people and A players. But more than that, you want to get A people that are going to contribute in a meaningful way for a long time because the people that you drafted this draft, everyone's going to look at and say, like, hey – this is what we stand for. So I think this is probably a draft to probably take a little less risk. So then you're not maybe as concerned at getting the top guy at that top position of value. If you see, for example, a great center sitting there, you don't really see centers go in the top 10. Yeah. Like we haven't seen one center go in the top 10 in 25 years. If you're trying to set down foundation, that's something you might be more willing to do in a draft like this if you're Joe Shane. Yeah, I, I think so. I think you want to get, again, players that are like bedrock players, like, you know, like, Going back to like you know Hutchinson versus Thibodeau. Thibodeau may be the better player long term, but I don't think you go wrong with a guy like Aiden Hutchinson and what he can mean to your program. What's the process right now then, as they're talking to these guys? And you know this is a huge NFL convention, right? He's talking to people around the league. As a general manager, what goals are you trying to accomplish here when you're at the combine, from a roster construction perspective, and even from a draft perspective? I think you're trying to collect information so you can make the best strategic plans possible. If you were a team looking for a quarterback, you have to make sure that you can. Like Marcus Mariota and Mitch Trubisky are going to have a lot more interest because of the way 
right now the Kenny Pickett's and the Sam Howells look, and that's just what you're trying to do is you're trying to synthesize all that information, John, to make the best decision you can. We'll get both like free agency and the draft. You know, Joe Shane was asked about whether or not they would think about moving Saquon Barkley to this press conference. How would you handle that? He's on the last year of his deal, right? He's coming off two injury plate seasons, so if you trade him now, you're really trading him at pretty low value, right? How do you weigh what you can get back for him now, bringing him back for another year, then you might hit free agency, signing a running back to a second contract. How do you kind of put that all into a mix and figure out what to do? Yeah, that one's easy for me. He's a great player. Um, he's dynamic. I know he hasn't been healthy, but those are the players we're, we're trying to get. Like, we're not trying to move on from the Saquon yeah. Barkley. It's like we're trying to acquire those types of players. So it hasn't been perfect, but I think he's so dynamic in the passing game. I think he's such a weapon. And I just know, like, we're, being around quarterbacks as long as I have, like, you know, when they hit, you know, a check down and – it goes for 40 yards, they get into a rhythm, they get some confidence. It, it's just really smart. So I think it's like getting those quarterbacks big time plays on easy throws is a big part of what they, I think he's a big part of the solution. And you got to figure too that a guy like Brian Dable and Mike Kafka are going to be a figure out a way to use him creatively in those yeah. ways, right? Yeah, I think Brian Dable would do a great job of is he would take some of that shrimp cocktail over your shoulder right now, and he he would do a really good job with that. So oh, was there a lot of those little St. Elmo's going on back yeah, there? Yeah, I guess so. Like, <laughs> it's really very good marketing for them. It is very good. Well, well, you know, no one likes to eat more than media people. <laughs> you, you know that's true. Um, I Daniel, guess that's why I'm such a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, Daniel Jones, how did you try to? Figure out what you have with him in year number four so you can make an educated decision on him if they don't pick up his fifth-year option in May. Yeah, yeah, my uh, my arrow's up on him. It hasn't been perfect, but, you know, John Mara talked about that, right? Like, they have to put him in a position to be successful. To me, it always goes back to the offensive line. They, 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 they get that worked out. They get that solidified, and um, they have a chance to really uh, – again, when you look at the options, I put a lot more into Daniel Jones to see if we can make it work. And you mentioned the quarterback landscapes just frankly – not very good this offseason, so where are you finding a better solution? How do you fix that offensive line? Because right now, odds are the Giants are only going to have one guy coming back from their offensive line last year, and that's Andrew Thomas. You could have four new starters, not a lot of money in for agency. You do the two first-round picks. So how do you go about trying to at least get that offensive line back to respectability so you can get a good, clean judgment on Daniel Jones? I think you have to scour. I think it's adding one or two in free agency that maybe not – expensive guys but guys that can come in and, and really help you and then keep adding one or two every year in the draft and, and try to go eight and nine deep because over a 17 game season they'll, they'll all play is this something you can fix in a year or is it going to take a couple seasons to I, get there I, I think so i think you can make big progress again andrew thomas keeps developing you draft one you sign one it should look better maybe you bring one back from that group um i know guys haven't worked out i feel like we keep talking about the giants offensive line pass rushers but um I think they could look a lot better in a year. What do you think Giant fans should be excited about with Brian Dable, Mike Kafka, and Wink Martindale? You know, yeah, hand, yeah. hand their offense and defense. Yeah, I had the privilege of working with Brian. You're getting a guy that's a great people person, really authentic. He's a guy that is a great listener. When things go wrong, it's his fault. When things go right, he gives out credit. He's a selfless leader. Did you overlap with Joe in Miami? Yeah, uh, briefly. How was that? Good. You know, look. Uh, they've done a great job at Buffalo. Uh, he's deserved this opportunity. And, um, you know, it be interesting. Again, they got some big decisions here, right, with uh, coming up with, you know, not only Daniel Jones, but Saquon Barkley. And then finally on defense, Wing Martindale. Obviously, you've seen teams play against that type of defense yep. for a long time. How should the Giants try to build so they maximize the efficiency of that aggressive defensive approach? Pressure players. You would have pressure players and then corners that could cover on the back end. You know, he comes from the Rex Ryan school where, you know, we loaded up at corner so we could blitz a lot, and um, that's something I know that he really believes in. Mike, this was great stuff, man. I really right. appreciate it. Thank right, you so thank, much. Go enjoy your shrimp cocktail. I will. Mike Tannenbaum from ESPN, former NFL general manager. Thank you for joining us on the Giants Huddle Podcast, all brought to you by AWS, proud partner of the New York Giants. Stay tuned for more coverage from the NFL Combine right here on Giants.com, the Giants mobile app, on our social media platforms.